his second Bridgestone Pole Award of his young career. AJ Allmending a stunning effort. Sebastian Bourdais, quickens on Friday, has to make do with the outside of the front row. Justin Wilson, he will start on row two alongside Oriol Serbia. A big jump for PK Reed Racing after a disaster in Portland. Paul Tracy on the inside of row three, despite that practice, or that crash just before qualifying, rather. And Nelson Philippe, a great run in the CTHVM car. Then we go down to Bruno Jancaro on the inside of the fourth row, not able to match the pace of his teammate, and Alex Tagliani, who's finished in the top five, three of the last four years here in Cleveland. So Will Power is behind the A ball, he feels, as a result of that wet practice on Friday morning, but it's still a good job to start on row six. Five of the grid alongside Cristiano De Matter. Dan Clark is there on row seven with Andrew Ranger, ranks row six with Andrew Ranger, who still stands fourth in the points. Charles Wolfsman, who won both Atlantic races last year here in Cleveland, looking for a good result and a good strong run from Catherine Legg in the PKV racing car. We go on to the eighth row. We got Nikki Pastorelli for Rocket Sports Racing and number 11, Jan Halen in the Dale coin racing machine. The final row of the grid, the second Adele coin cast for Mario Dominguez and Tonis Kazimitz, who had a good run here last year in the Atlantics, a second and a fourth place finish and a pole. He will start last in his second champ car start for the Rocket Sports team. For Mario Dominguez, he starts on the back row as a result of this shunt yesterday morning. You, if you see, look very carefully, the front wing fell off that car as he went into turn eight. 84 Gs had impact with the wall there in turn eight. A massive shunt destroyed the front of the car and for the second time in three races, the Dale Coin Racing crew has had to work all night to prepare their backup car, James. Yeah, that, uh, that clip really doesn't do that crash justice. That was a really hard hit. Mario took quite a lick in there, but uh, he bounced back. They weren't able to get the car back uh, in time for qualifying, so that's why he's starting from the uh, 17th position. There is the green flag, and already it's Charles Walsh. I think that was on the outside there. Down to the inside goes Justin Wilson, trying to sneak past, but round the outside of everybody goes Bruno Jocchiera. Oh, my God. Oh, another car off the grass. Several cars off the grass. BT being sandwiched in the middle there. We got a car around. Andrew Ranger spins around, so he got lost. He was the one who lost out on that shuffle on the exit of the corner. At least they all made it to the apex. Oh, no. Paul, that's Paul Tracy. Oh, he keeps it. He keeps it going. He didn't beach the car, but there's is definite there damage, damage to that car. There is to uh, at least one of those rear wheels. I think there is damage to the rear suspension. On and Sebastian Bourdais off. It looks like. So boy, this has been a, uh, a very strange start. They seem to get through that corner foot pretty cleanly, but apparently not the case there is Andrew Ranger. Clearly he has lost the power on that engine. Here comes the Champ Car Safety Car team, and the pace car has been scrambled as well. Paddy Hughes driving the pace car. Wow, look at oh, this. Oh, look at that. That's PT on, on top and on over top of Bourdais. To Bourdais. Not the first time those two have come together, certainly. And we saw as PT exited corner one, he was being sandwiched in between two cars. Apparently, one of them, Bourdais, maybe Bourdais didn't realize he so was Bourdais there, came is across. Out in the grass. And Bourdais, it does, I do not think that that car will get back going this afternoon, Jeff. Wow, that is a disaster for Newman Haas Racing. Sebastian Bourdais, he was disappointed not to claim the pole position. He was disappointed last year. And all the digger pits. Yeah, that's it, second of the four sides. Because here's again a re replay of the start. You can see that Paul Tracy had to dodge to miss that cone on the inside. And here he is. They seem to be lined up. Well, there's Bruno Junquiera going all the way around the outside. And look at those two there. That is, I think that was, you can see there, it's Oriol Serbia, I think, and Rangers Paul Tracy. The He's the one who comes back on. And uh, it, the, there were three cars side by side. There is AJ. AJ is coming into the pit lane. There were three abreast coming off turn one. Here's a look from the onboard Alex Sagliani. Let's watch him. There's going to, the cone goes flying from Oriol Serbia. And he gets pushed off by uh, cars. Yeah. Oh, and then contact there as he pushes one of the Rocket Sports cars wide. I think it was Andrew Ranger who spun off there to the outside. Here is AJ Armitting on pit lane. And believe it or not, both of the four side cars, we saw what happened to Paul Tracy, but look behind. AJ Armitting had to have a new nose cone replaced, came in with front wing damage. Now they're going to try to work on Paul Tracy's car, but certainly with the height that that car took, you would think that there might be more damage. Finally, let's hope we can get at least one lap of complete racing, green flag racing under our belts. Oriol Serbia, a great jump there at the green flag. He leads clearly into turn one. Justin Wilson in the CDW car, tucking behind in second place. Everybody else seems to get through the corner all right. We just have the tail end of the field coming through, and there seems to be no issues. Wait, on board with Justin Wilson as he chases down race leader Oriol Serbia, who did get a great jump on that start. Another race at Cleveland, another turn one incident. We're finally under green here at this race. Oh, no! That is contact. Nicky Pastorelli in one of the Forsyth cars. Paul Tracy. Paul Tracy. Yeah, it is Paul Tracy. So Nicky Pastorelli there. Uh -oh, PT's getting a bit of over, a little over exuberant there as he tries to get going again. And 
Things are just going from bad to worse for Paul Tracy this weekend. There is Nicky Pastorelli. It looked like a pretty bold move. Look, he's lost the uh, the right, the left front wheel hanging off that car. That's the end of his day. And I think that is almost certainly going to bring out a full course caution for the, what, the third time? This, yeah, this, this wasn't a bold move. This was simply just missing your braking point, having nowhere to go. As the caution does come out now for Nicky's car, off just on the outside of turn one there. I think he just really missed his braking point, looking in his mirrors, trying to keep Nelson behind him, and PT was an unfortunate victim in that one. We set the order for you again. Bruno Junqueira out in front. You can see the crawler across the top of the screen. AJ Omening in second place. Mario Dominguez third, of course, driving now for Dale Coyne Racing. Behind Dominguez is Paul Tracy. Well, I'm caught up with Paul Genalozzi, the owner of Team Rocket Sports and the owner for uh, Nicky Passarelli in the number eight car. What did he say happened? Have you had a chance to talk to him? Yeah, I have, and it was, it was obvious to him that Tracy's car was wounded because he couldn't settle in. The car was ill handling, so Nicky tried to go inside. Paul doesn't give up real estate very easily, unfortunately, and Nicky got the worst end. Here we go, the green flag is out again, and I was told if they come in on lap eight, you need, you need about eight laps of yellow to be able to make it to the pit the end of the race with just three pit stops. We haven't quite got that standard yet since they made those pit stops, but it's certainly very, very close. So we'll see how the strategy plays out. There's Mario Dominguez in third place. Paul Tracy with the... Uh, is that Catherine Leg there? She is one lap down, is Catherine. So PT moves himself to it. He's running in fourth place. And as I say, he is struggling with that car, but running quickly. <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe still how Paul, Paul Tracy's in fourth place in this race after having been airborne, having been hit in corner one, having made two pit stops at the beginning of this race, and he still finds himself in fourth. This car is acting like the man himself. It's an absolute tank this afternoon. Yeah, that car is absolutely bulletproof, isn't it? Literally. Yeah, it is. It's been I, hit I, from all sides. I really I can't comprehend. Hand out. Not only is this car still circulating, it's still circulating in fourth place as AJ Allmendinger passes for the lead. Bruno Jankera into the 9-10 chicane. Great move by AJ Allmendinger. He got a great run off of turn eight onto the, the, the fastest part of the of the racetrack, up to around about 180 miles an hour going into the into the 9-10 chicane, and a brilliant move down the inside. Here's a battle coming down now under braking. There is uh, Justin Wilson and the uh, Dan, Dan Clark. Clark. Yeah, Dan Clark. So with Dan, the two Englishmen, they're battling now for seventh and eighth places. It's Wilson that takes over that position. We see one of the Forsyth cars in the wall. It looks like Paul Tracy. I think I see a red number three on the nose cone of that car. Yes, it is indeed. Paul Tracy has put in the wall in corner right. Like I was saying, that's a s uh, slippery corner and the only wall to hit. And not the first time this weekend, certainly not the first time in his career that Paul has found this wall. Absolutely disappointing, considering everything that him and that car have been through so far this uh, this race as we watch the replay here Jeez. just gets like loose he understood in the middle of the corner and then it sort of snaps around and maybe he's trying to gas gas it to try and get it you know gets induce some oversteer and bring it back under control but you run out of room really quickly down there in turn eight don't you justin inside, wilson oh, in the oh wall sorry jeremy justin wilson has thrown away a top four finish oh that's brutal justin coming in here 30 points behind sebastian a good finish with sebastian out of the race would have really closed up the championship fight here Oh, we need to see a replay of that. And here we go on board Coming with Justin. To turn three and turn four. Oh, another suspension failure. The right front suspension just failed, didn't it? Let go, Justin. He lets go of the yeah. wheel there. A relatively soft contact, but another uncharacteristic suspension failure from this car in the CDW Roosport machine. Carl Russo there looks on, obviously not very pleased with what's just happened. Across the line they go one more time. I think there'll be white flag next time around by my calculations. It's going to be a two-hour race, not a one-hour 55. And again, slightly quicker again from Mario Dominguez. He's not giving up in that battle for second place. There, there is a battle of second, third, fourth, and fifth. Dominguez, Clark, Junquera, and Serbia. Second, third, fourth, and fifth. AJ got a lead of about 1.7 seconds. Seconds. It's not a, it's not a huge lead, but it's uh, it's relatively comfortable. But, well, you can tell. Oh, as look, Mario drops a little bit of a wheel there. Dan followed him. No harm, no foul. But AJ's just done such a phenomenal job. I I cannot explain this enough. He. He ran the pace he needed to, got the mileage he needed to, and you can tell that because now his team has said, you're good, you're clear, run what you're comfortable doing, and his lap times have fallen almost a second. He was running consistent mid-59s, 59.6 and 7s. Now he's 58.8, so he's really put the hammer down. He knows he's got the car, he knows he's got the fuel, and he is going for two for two. You think they're going to pick up his contract? Well, I think they might well do. <laughs> there is the white flag, so just one more lap to go here in, in the boot leg. Down to the inside goes Dave Dan Clark. All right. Wheel to wheel into the corner, he gets the move, but now let's see what happens coming off the corner. Yeah, no! Don't 
take him out. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Destructive Dan lives up to the name. Oh. Poor Mario Dominguez. He is the big loser in that, I think. Potential. Oh, no. That is a tragedy for Dale Coin Racing. There is Dale. He can't believe it. And it was a great move down the inside, but for some reason, Dan tried to pinch him coming off the corner. All you've got to do is get on the power, get a clean run off the corner, and you've got it made going up to turn three. And oh, you oh. stalled the engine as well. What this a disaster. Unbelievable. And, you know, God, this is, this is tragic, quite frankly. Look at the frustration from Dan Clark. I'm sure with himself there, but his, I was just about to talk about his teammate because Nelson just had the fastest lap of the race, but just here we are into the final corner. This is AJ Allmendinger. Two drives he has had, two weekends for Kerry Forsyth, and two wins. Can you believe it? I, I don't know what to touch on the fact that AJ just won the race or what we just witnessed in corner one. That was unbelievable. It was a good, clean move by Dan, but like you say, he pinched it a little bit on the edge exit and uh, you know Mario was gonna try and high low him gonna try and get onto his what his one last push of power to pass to get him back into uh, into the third corner and then this disaster struck but we look at AJ now the fireworks erupting the donuts are starting he's two for two he's getting good look at that slow steady he's burning the rubber off those Bridgestones goodness me what a fabulous job he did his donuts we were remarking last week on the quality of his donuts. there's Mario Dominguez he is out of the race he's not going to uh, I don't think he's going to see the finish line, but he is going to be classified, I believe, perhaps in sixth place, but he deserved oh so much more than that. Let's watch Here is, is a replay. Down to the inside dives Dan Clark. Fair enough, no problem there. He's got the got the position on Mario. Mario that gets a, waits back a little bit, gets a great run off the corner. There, Dan Clark just tries to pinch it a crazy move. I mean, this guy's been racing. Yes, he was only doing Formula 4 two years ago, but he's been racing an awful long time. And, uh, you know, you've got to... You've got to be smart about it. I mean, made the pass, and even if you lose it again on the exit, if the other guy gets a better, a, you know, a better exit to him, you're going to go wheel to wheel in turn three. He just got on the power a little bit too soon, actually, is what happened. He, he got on it too soon, and like you say, he tried to pinch it. If he had tracked out, that car would not have stepped out the way it did, and unfortunately, it just collected Mario. He got along the inside. He knew that Mario was going to slow the car down earlier, turn it sharper, and try what we call high-low, and that's when you go from the outside and cut across the back of the car to the inside. Mario had one push of his power to pass left he was probably going to get on that and try and get Dan back into the inside but Dan had lots of power to pass to use as well and like you say he tried to uh, he tried to pinch Mario if he had just just tracked out and let the race let those two cars race the way they should have that incident would not have happened and both of those guys would have been on the podium really unfortunate for Mario Dominguez my heart goes out to Mario you know to the fire. entire Delcoin racing team absolutely so here's the unofficial results from a, an incredibly eventful day here in Cleveland. Far too eventful in many ways, but a brilliant performance again by A.J. Olmeninger. Bruno Junquiera, the first uh, podium position since he was very badly injured in Indianapolis one year ago. Oriel Serbia, he comes through to take the, the uh, third place for PKV Racing. Tagliani, fourth for Team Australia. Jan Halen and Mario Dominguez, fifth and sixth for Dale Coyne Racing, but it could have been so much more for them. Dan Clark is still shown in seventh, ahead of Catherine Legg, Will Power, and Nelson Philippe. It's, uh, it's just been a stellar day, day here, James. Just sum it up for us. It's been a great race, action-packed, lots of passing, lots of incidents, but more importantly, we, should, we should, saw a very mature AJ drive from the back and get his second win for Forsyth. Absolutely unbelievable stuff. A future champion right here, Jeremy. There's been so much action, so much to talk about. We're thrilled you could join us. My name's Jeremy Shaw. Thanks to James Hinchcliffe, also Jan Vikas and Cameron Steele on pit lane. We'll do it again in Toronto in two weeks' time. We'll see you then.